Have you ever recorded no, yourself having no. sex? Have you Red ever, is a 50s yeah. dad. He, Red's never had sex. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when did you record yourself? I, I've been a couple of exes with, with whom we, we just set a camera up. And, uh, and what have you done with the tapes? This is with Delete. Well, let's give them to Patreon. Delete. For anyone yeah. from Patreon, you can watch his show. I, well, I hope they're Delete because I trust, entrusted her with Delete it. Oh, my God. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> and burning her own <laughs> eyes. <laughs> the thing is, if, here's the thing. If, let's say, I go on to do something where someone feels compelled to want to release the sex tape. Mm. And there's I just you in a piggy shit. mask. You're, I, you're hosting this morning. But, but then... <laughs> the woman in the tape, she's <laughs> she's also in the tape. <laughs> getting, I don't think she wants it out there yeah, either. Getting pounded by a walrus. <laughs> <laughs> You'd have to be a pretty famous walrus <laughs> for her to want it out there. Or hearing me deep breathing, just trying to get some air into my lungs. It was like fit. Like, <laughs> <laughs> the sex tape no one wanted. No one wanted. <laughs> the year is with Red and Bobby. Hit it, Bobby. Welcome to the Year Is Podcast, the podcast where every episode we travel back, I can't do this anymore, <laughs> to a year in fucking history, okay? Yes. We talk about the weirdest, the most interesting, the strangest. You know by now. What we do. Maybe you don't actually. Maybe you're here because of our guest. Oh, that's a very, very large Valid point. Ishan Akbar, star of Netflix oh. hit show. Sex education. Uh huh. Uh, what else? Well, he's in it. I don't know if you're a star. I well, haven't seen it. Th- I haven't seen it either. It's too. It's one of those shows. Where you're like, what are you watching? I'm just watching that show where teens fuck. It's really yes. good for me. Yeah, they, and that's I why saying, I was very keen to to be in it. To be in Fair it. Fair enough. To legitimize my pedophilia. Live the Apollo. You've done. Yes, I that's, have. that's such a <laughs> that's such a bold way to start when you're in it when you're in a teen show on Netflix. <laughs> What a bold start for Isha. He plays a teacher. <laughs> he plays uh, a teacher. I don't play a teacher, actually. No, what would you play? I can't say. Oh, shit. Oh, Sorry, it's, okay. it's all... We can't talk about it. But it's been announced that you're going to be in it. Yeah, and also, to and, be fair... And now edit it out of it before it's released. <laughs> to be fair... You're uh, going to be Chris Delia out of <laughs> sex education because they, of... They're the ones who said put starring in the next series. Mm-hmm. So the starring has got nothing to do with me. It's their official They said line. that. Yeah, yeah. They it's said they use the word line. starring. Yes. Mm-hmm. Well, that's they're, good. They're but I don't, are you line. in it a lot? I am. I'm in it. If, I'm a very, very visible character. Where was it filmed? It was filmed in Wales. Oh, nice. Uh, in Newport. How much money did you make? No, don't ask that. <laughs> Red, Why be not? Cool. Why not? Cool, I want to know. I Let's just say just it took cool. me into a higher tax bracket. Oh. oh. <laughs> See, he's not cool either. I, yes. knew, he'd, I knew he'd I'm answer. I'm, <laughs> Asians answer that kind of money. <laughs> yes. yeah. so we don't give a fuck. No, fair enough. And tonight, Ishan, you are doing the O2 supporting Mickey Flanagan. I am. My, that is mental. My eighth time there this month. What happened on the... Because f- I know this, but can you tell Bobby and I... Uh, and our listeners and yes. viewers, what happened on the first night at the O2? Well, the first Saturday of the O2. First it, was, it, was, it was night three for me. Okay. Um, so the set was going pretty well. We're 16 minutes into the set. Things are going as swimmingly as they possibly can. Mm-hmm. Now, do you do crowd work or you just stick to the hit? Straight set. You can't do crowd work. <laughs> no. You can't do it. What any. do you do? <laughs> I'd like this. What are you? <laughs> Look yeah. at him. He, he looks like Ant from Ant and Dad. <laughs> and I'm <Yeah>. like, what? <laughs> There's 19,999 people going, what the who the fuck is he talking to? Um, So straight set, 60 minutes in, there's a build-up of noise about stage right up in the gods, and the noise gets louder and turns into a chant, which to me sounded like, turn it off, get him off. And then people started booing, so then I was like, oh shit, I think the O2 Arena's booing me for some reason. How did that feel? It felt like, at first... (laughs) Bad. It felt, yeah, at first, because, you know, it's... It's a you physically feel laughter, but you also physically feel hatred. Yeah, right. So a large wall of it. Yeah, a large wall of noise just hitting my face. Yeah. So then I just fronted up and like, who the fuck are you booing? How dare you? I'm each had I want to be on Netflix and too. I don't give a fuck about you, bitches. Wait, did you say that? Yes. <laughs> like an <laughs> oh god, he's done. <laughs> right. You just went for it big time. Yeah. Uh, Asked. <laughs> 
<laughs> I'm going to be on the, Netflix. Yeah, how dare you? And then I got so's the, Ted Bundy. Yes, yeah, so got the audience to go. Who here thinks they're a gaggle of cunts? And loads of people cheered. And suddenly there was just wall to wall noise. Mm-hmm. Right? And Mickey's backstage being like, "Thanks, Isha, and you're doing. It. Thanks for the warm up." <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mickey's like, "What the fuck's going on?" And then the uh, I wrapped up the set by saying, "95 percent of you have been amazing, but five percent of you." have been an absolute gaggle of cunts and just put my middle fingers up. 5% of too. them is still a thousand people. Yes, yeah, a lot of people. So I just it like... It's probably actually like my... 1%. It was probably four. You think really? it was 800 of them hated you? Yeah. But so Fuck. I went... My, my um, Rosie's mate went one yeah. night and this is bef- the day before this happened. Yeah. And she said she missed your set because she had to go complain to the sound man because the noise was echoing behind them and it was yeah. weird and you couldn't hear there were a lot of sound issues so yeah. I flipped off the O2 I get off stage and I'm like fine whatever what a story then an hour later I'm at dinner with two of my friends who came with me that night and my phone's blowing up and all these messages come through and uh, one few of them were like we were in the crowd tonight and we were in the section that was the problem we couldn't hear you so we were chanting turn it up <laughs> <laughs> but you heard like, I'm on Netflix <laughs> 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 That's what? <laughs> <laughs> you had to turn it off and go to all the gaggle of cunts. Yeah, so it wasn't get him off, it was turn it off. They're yeah, like, we just want to enjoy gonna... the show. And you're like, you guys are fucking yeah. racist cunts. How dare you? I'm better than you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Were you not worried? So there, so there was no issue. There was no issue. It was just a sound problem. <laughs> it, you, and you, 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 you took it the wrong way. I racially profiled Start, his audience. Started listing your credits. Yeah. <laughs> I racially profiled his audience. Yeah. For being racist because the night. Did before... you call them racist? No, I didn't okay. say I didn't say the R word. Mm. But the night before, I got an email from someone who was like, "It was the nicest your shit message ever." It was an email on my website that read, "Dear Ishan, I saw you opening for Mickey Flanagan last night at the O2 Arena. Please consider another career. God bless." It's just so <laughs> funny that they can see you at the O2 and still go, "Well, this guy's career is not going." Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's like you're at the you're at the pinnacle of comedic success. Yeah. Other than being the guy at the end, but opening for someone in front of twenty thousand people is still pretty fucking cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they're like, you "Do something else. Like you do something else. Whatever that guy does <laughs> yeah. or woman will never be." There no, there's no way they are as good at what they do as you are at what you're doing. Right, yeah. When right, you're... yeah. But you even see on Twitter, someone go, Kevin Hart's as funny as a child with cancer. It's like, I've never seen a child with cancer sell a million tortoises. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's just not. It's what true. Are they gonna, what are they going to do? What do you oh, mean? What's, what's a child with cancer going to do? No, I, know, I know, I know. Yeah, it's it, be we'll just limited. get up and go. See, I'm still better than Kevin Hart. I, uh, I can't. You know, I'm, I'm dying, and everyone's like, I'm still better than Dude, Kevin Hart. I don't think they tell them. They just say like, you're sick for a while. You're gonna get better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But the, I'm just, yeah. I do think no matter where you get to, in this game, you know, there's gonna be haters. But the thing is, because I had that in the back of my mind, and having had open for Mickey and had incidents where people have been chucked out for being racist. Oh yeah, they were. I remember that. It happened a few times. You know, the part of me just went, maybe there was a build-up of something, because there's a lot of them. Yeah, and yeah. I think with Mickey, you know, Mickey is a, is a working-class hero, mm-hmm. right? And so with that comes a certain cabal of people who are going to be racist. That's just a given. So because I've had those incidents in the past, I just, my mind just went straight to that. Yeah, okay. But I was wrong. Because what happened, didn't you have, you were, there was a fight or something, wasn't yeah, there? Yeah, there was a, well, in Edinburgh, uh, um, someone was shouting out racist things. Uh, not me. Mm. So we're shouting out racist <laughs> things, and then someone turned around and headbutted him. Fucking hell. <laughs> the, the headbutter is the hero in yeah, there. Yeah, the headbutter's yeah. the hero, and then a fight broke out. Then we had. Uh, an I once saw a fight. I once saw a fight, and it was uh, it was the most awkward fight I've ever been a part of. So I'm having a cigarette with this guy. He's telling me how he's uh, how he's black, but he was one of these. You know, some he black guys. Sorry, he's he just telling people how he's black. <laughs> no, but so went, you know, oh, shit, you are. <laughs> but some black guys look white. All right, yeah, yeah. yeah. So he's a white <laughs> yeah. black guy. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. he looks white, but he's telling me how his whole family's black and he's black, and I'm like, oh, interesting. You okay. know, I'm just. He gave me a cigarette. I'm just listening. Was yeah. he called Chet Hayes by any chance? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Then uh, this uh, Polish guy comes up uh, and his girlfriend. Right? They don't know either of us right they also don't know this guy is black right the polish because he visibly guy looks white because he visibly he he presents as a white person yeah. sounds like a white guy sounds, <laughs> sounds <laughs> like rachel dollazel <laughs> so, the, the, the the polish guy uh sees us and he wants to make new friends so, now the route that he went that, that he took i hate drop n-bomb <laughs> yes yes 
So the route that he took towards new friendship wasn't quite that. I can't remember Fuck. the specifics, but he went with racism. So he told a racist joke to me and this black guy who looks white. <laughs> As an opening gambit. As an opener, a break, a, 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 I would say a bold open. Now, the, the, the black like guy, fair enough, gets pretty offended. Yeah. Instantly, White black guy. <laughs> the, the the Polish guy is apologetic. He realizes I have misjudged my attempt at friendship, and he starts apologizing. He's really sorry, and uh, then uh, the white black guy. <laughs> Punched the Polish guy's girlfriend in the face. Oh, okay. And I was really like. Now, what do you do? Who do you sign with? The racist? Or, yeah. Yes, or the, I was in a, a conundrum now because I was really on the black guy's side, but then he punched a woman in the face because he was trying to attack the Polish guy, and the girlfriend stepped in, then he punched her in the face. Mm. And I was now in a situation where I was morally not on either person's side. Yeah. Because racism is wrong, but also punching women in the face is wrong. And I left. I just decided if the police come, I would like to not be involved. Involved in the giving and a statement. Everyone here has their own issues. Yeah. Racism, dating a racist, defending a racist, being punched in the face by a man. Yeah, it's quite a shit soup, isn't it? It was, yeah, I, and I was less in the soup, so I chose to not be a part of it. What is, what, I mean, if we were playing Top Trumps, though, what's worse? The racism? I think hitting the girl or the in the face. Of, really? I think, think violence is always worse, isn't it? Violence is always worse than racism. No. I, no, no, violence is always worse than words. You know, I do think. Yeah, but well, Sticks at the and same time, break my bones. I don't know because you're getting less. Tr I don't know. I don't know. I I didn't know the answer, so I chose not to choose mm, a side. Mm. If, I'm Holly Willoughby. I just sit there. Going, just, I just didn't see a thing. thing. <laughs> if I still had to smoke a cigarette with anyone again, I'd smoke a cigarette with the the black guy. You know, oh, the, the woman, yeah, the, I'd the, rather the white black guy. Well, Have you ever considered that maybe he wasn't? He just wanted to hit a woman in the face. He thought this is the easiest way of doing. I it. I believe <laughs> him. Yeah, he told me that before she came I've along. I've never I heard of a white him. black guy. Is anyone? Is oh, yeah, 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 yeah. There was a, a guy. Thing. It's a there was thing. a guy in my uh, uni on my course. Actually, he was like a Jamaican dude, but he was white. Yeah, but was he raised in like no, no, white? Yeah, right. raised, it's he, just like El, it's, he was raised in Jamaica. Yeah, it's like an albino thing. Oh, them. Yes, I've got a friend like. Oh, so you you thought someone because they had an accent was a white black guy. No, no, because he was born and raised in Jamaica. No, yeah, but did he have black parents? Yeah, he had one black dad. And oh, one okay, one. okay. I'm, but, but he looked like yeah, completely yeah. white. Yeah. yeah. Somehow his mum's genes overpowered. Mm. Either mm. way, uh, yeah, it was an awkward situation, which I thought I should share. You know, fair enough. Very good, good start. We're talking about racial genetics. Um, yeah, <laughs> we're yeah. not that much. <laughs> and violence against women. Yeah, which is always which good to podcast get into. does not condone. I, uh, so. Isham, because we brought you on, I thought I'm going to do the year Isham was born in. Uh huh. You were born in 1984. I was born in 1984. I went back to 1985. Oh, so because I, I didn't realise. I thought you were, I thought you were four years older than me, not five. Yeah, I'm an old man. So you're 40 next year. Next year, yeah. Fuck. On August the 13th. 14th. Fuck. Ah! One out every One out time. Every time. Jesus Christ. That was close. Unbelievable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm 40 next year. Are you looking forward to it? Yeah, I am. I don't feel it, though. When, what, you don't feel 40? No, I don't feel it. Well, you were out till 4 a.m. last night. I was out till 4 a.m. last night. I forgot uh, about the listeners, Isham was an hour and a half late to the podcast. Yes. I messaged him at 12 going, where are you? And he went, fuck, 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 fuck. <laughs> I'm in bed. I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and then I just drove here. you came. Sunset. Thanks I for did. coming. My absolute pleasure and honour. Mm. An honour and privilege to be here. I've wanted to do this podcast for a long time. This actually feels like a rubber stamping. What, just you made it? You are such a little kiss ass. <laughs> okay. I've been wanting to do this podcast Ishan since Akbar. the day it got released. And that's where you forgot that you were doing it. <laughs> <laughs> You're such a kiss ass, I just, Ishan. I just forgot to put it up my, in my diary, but I've wanted to do this. And I, I say this with so much love, though, but if you were in a room with Prince Andrew, you would say, listen, I think you really, what happened to you was unfair. Like, you are you, you, you are so conflict adverse. Oh, no, I'm not conflict adverse. That's no. He, no, he just swore at the O2. Yeah, I'm not conflict averse, I don't think. No. I think that uh, I, I can uh, uh, try and pacify a situation as yeah, best yeah. as possible. Well, you also like to get on with people. 
Yeah, yeah, like, yeah this is a good thing. It's a good, even, thing. Even it's a good quality. Even, even yeah, pedophiles. Yeah, yeah, no, I'm sure you did that, but that was like five minutes of your life. I'm not going to judge. Yeah, yeah, you yeah, yeah, on, yeah, yeah. Wait, I think minutes. that's actually a fun. Okay, if you had to spend a week with one famous pedophile, who would you choose? Oh. Michael Jackson. Yeah, that would be fun, wouldn't yeah, it? Most talented one out there. Yeah. Um, uh, he doesn't seem like a good hang. He doesn't. Maybe he might buy you stuff. He might no, take you shopping. I don't think you're old enough that he'd be interested. No, I think, maybe not. But you, I think he would just be like, oh, "I'm going to do. I'm going to take sleeping pills and yeah, play and in you the get bed. to play in like Neverland." Seems, <laughs> yeah, that's true. If you get to hang out at his house, I mean. R.I.P. Rolf looked like he was quite fun. <laughs> yeah. Did you do his painting? Painting, yeah, no. Okay. All sorts Actually, going all, on. All There's quite an artsy cultural thing going on. I feel yeah. like he'd go for a lot of walks. Yeah. And... I like he, walks. He seemed quite funny. I think they would be like quite good conversation. I uh, actually, I don't actually have an answer because I wouldn't want to hang out with a pedophile. So <laughs> I don't know <laughs> Which what, is what I should have said. Really, yeah, you both, <laughs> you both really want to hang out with no famous. That's, Listen, you, you want to hang out in with the pedophiles. spirit of the question. Oh. We answered it. Well, in the spirit of the question, I don't have an answer because I'm I have a moral backbone. It's sad. Do I know that they're a pedophile at the time when I'm hanging out with yeah. them? You yes, you had oh, to you choose have to. one. They're famous. Okay. You had to choose yeah. one. <clears throat> so it's but I, yeah. I chose not to. Okay, mine will still be Rolf Harris. Yeah, yeah. And that's, that's, a, that's a fair <laughs> enough. You'd, get, you'd come back with a lot of, like, painted mugs. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, a lot of trinkets. All sorts of stuff. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. No, I get you. Thank you. That seems fair. So 1985, we're going back. This is a history podcast, Ishan, yes. where we talk about history. Yeah. Yes. We say we do a deep dive, but what we, we sort of skirt around stuff. Yeah. yeah. Good. But I, like uh, I don't know why I thought of you, but I just have a feeling you might have watched this. Neighbours debuts. In 1985? On Seven Network in Australia. Wow. Yeah, 1985. I always thought it was going on a lot longer. Did you get Neighbours in Canada? No. Okay, so we got it here, but there's a weird thing with Neighbours because Neighbours has been the like launch pad for so many superstars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In a way, no other soap ever has. Yeah. Because if you look at like EastEnders, yeah, you're not. So neighbors had. Ki- I've got Donovan, Donovan, Kylie Minogue, no. Russell Crowe, right. yeah. Margot Robbie, yeah, Liam Hemsworth, someone called Delta Goodrum, yeah, I know Delta. Okay, Guy Pearce, who's a fucking brilliant actor, yeah, yeah. Um, Nat- Natalie Imbruglia, Jesse Spencer, I don't know who that is, but. That's huge. That is huge. What a huge In EastEnders, platform. which Rosie watches all the time, she has it on in the background. It's the most depressing. Is it better acting? No, it's horrible. It's just, it's, it's unattractive people going, oh, I've got a fucking brain tumour. You know I got <laughs> to the final round of auditions for EastEnders. <laughs> really? Yeah. <laughs> this well, was... you wouldn't be in sex and... education now. No, I wouldn't. And they said, you're, you're not quite hard enough for the well, show. Yeah, ba- <laughs> yeah, basically. What happened they is... said you're too depressing. <laughs> way too depressing. There were three rounds. Well, there were meant to be three rounds. It got to a fourth. It was between mm. me and one other person. And they said, you've got all the characteristics we want for the character. I was going to be the middle brother in this new Asian family. Yeah, I've seen that family. Yeah, the middle uh, the middle brother. He's now been written out. He's dead. Um, <laughs> he's <laughs> <laughs> um, so they said... How oh, long you... was he on for? I think he was like on for like a year. I don't watch it. Like a yeah, year, yeah, year yeah. Half yeah. Like that. And then uh, they were like, you've got all the characteristics we want. You, you, you've gone to the role, but you sound very middle class. Mm-hmm. Right? This is EastEnders. So you've got to like, can you do an East End accent? I was like, well, listen, oh, I was, let's I was hear born it. in Whitechapel. I was born in Whitechapel in the Bow Bells. I'm a Cockney. Yeah. Right, I can do this. And he goes, all right then. So I go out of the room. I don't know what happened to me. I think I just got like too nervous, nervous. Too nervous or something. I walked in, shoulders bouncing. I'm like, all right, mate. I was in <laughs> Oh, no. no. <laughs> this is too like... offensive. No, that's, you're doing a character. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I would pay to have you be that guy, though. You'd be like, uh, what's the character from The Simpsons when, when they itchy and scratchy and they introduce the new guy? Scooby is so they introduce a new character to try and oh yes so more modern t- reference would yeah. be there's that stand up comedian in Sex and the City that everyone fucking hated yeah 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 but yeah but no yeah. just you is this like oh, it's it what, going? Mate, how's it going <laughs> just, right? you're trending every <laughs> night man. Oh, this, this is hell but I'm being paid <laughs> that would have been amazing apples and bananas yeah but I yeah we, we, there <laughs> it is, was a lot there is no like launch pad like that but neighbours like was popular over here well, Easton's had weird. like what Marty McCutcheon. Yeah, but she went on, she, you know, come That's on. one. Poor one. But we're talking, and EastEnders also had the guy who was in Yesterday, the movie, Asian guy as well. Remember the movie Yesterday? Oh, what? yes, yes. He was a horror show of a film. Something but, Patel, his name is? No. I'm not going to say. You, you can make <laughs> wild assumptions like that. <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm not going near it. But I can, I can visualise him. It's very Asian. Yeah. Um, yeah. But that's, Martin McCutcheon kind of, she hasn't blown, like, we all love Martine, but she's not on the level of I've only seen comes in Canada that kind of launch pads for famous Canadians. No. 
Well, Drake no. was in Degrassi. Oh, Degrassi, yes. Yeah. Oh, Sorry. Degrassi. Ah, Which yes. is so funny. It's because like, sex, it's like the original sex education, except no sex. And it's yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah. like, Degrassi was around from the 80s, and it was just like high school kids. And each episode deals with an issue, and you learn something. Yeah, 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 yeah. Drake was in a wheelchair in it, and a lot of people thought he was in a wheelchair for years. Really? Oh, uh, yeah. really? Yeah, when he got famous. But then he, be- uh, but he does sing in a monotone of a person in a wheelchair. Well, yeah, I'm, I don't actually listen to much, but he's like. Is that a thing about people in wheelchairs? I don't sing know, but in you monotone. Associate that, yeah, a certain voice. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, that's the wheelchair almost, voice. You know. <laughs> I don't think that's true at all. I don't think that's scientifically that's how it works. <laughs> it's got no bearing whatsoever. <laughs> all right, I'm just thinking of Stephen Hawking and a couple of other people. Oh, that's what you know. Oh, you mean the Stephen Hawking voice? <laughs> yeah, I thought you were talking about thing. just anyone. In a, you mean... <laughs> that's not because he's in a wheelchair. In that's because oh, right, okay. <laughs> he has a robot that talks for Oh, him. I see. That's what it sounds like to me. <laughs> I think of wheelchair voices. <laughs> You just thought, oh, it's because his back's positioned. <laughs> yeah. And his legs yeah, don't work. Vocal so. cords. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's a robot throat. Yes, oh, it's a yeah. robot throat. <laughs> it's so funny. Liam Hemsworth is... Uh, him and his brothers are like the hottest Chris. brothers alive, uh, I think. Is it Chris? And there's another one, isn't there? Chris, Hemsworth brothers. Liam. I'm going to check it Who out. Who are the Hemsworth brothers? So it's Chris, Liam, and there's not one I more. don't know the difference between them. If you put them all in front of me, I'd be like, yeah, the Hemsworths. I have no idea who's yeah. who. No, but they're one all good looking. One of them was looking. Thor. One of them fucked someone else. I yeah. don't know. Oh, so it's Luke and Liam and then Chris. Luke, Liam, and Chris. And yeah, they're yeah. all hot. Someone put up a picture of uh, one of them. I don't know which one. All the same. Yeah. And... Uh, he was on a surfboard lying down and no, he I think he stands he stood up, sorry. Yeah. And he has his four year old daughter at the front, he's just holding her while surfing. And like every woman in the world just shared that and you're like But it must be weird dating or marrying one of them because they all look kind of the same and they're all hot. Yeah. So you go yeah. you just go, Well you'd be up for any of this really. But also, why do the parents choose that naming uh, structure? You what, go the- Luke, Liam and then Chris. Why wouldn't you have Stick with the elves. Yeah, the yeah. Lucifer too. Hemsworth. Yeah, the Lucifer. mean one. <laughs> Leroy. <laughs> yeah, Leroy Hemsworth. Yeah, yeah. They go, we want to apologize for Leroy's behavior. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> one of them was Miley Cyrus. So you can really jump from that side. But it's a shame that we don't have that here. Because I go on EastEnders and I say, you're right, Governor. You're right, Governor. I've got a brain tumor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just said an abortion. But wait, so for the first three auditions, they just didn't. They didn't tell me. They didn't get you to do the voice. No. They just said, basically, they, they liked for the character. They liked how I portrayed it. And then they said, look, because we're coming to this decision, actually, we, one of the thoughts that the casting director had was, given who we've casted for the other two, you would sound way too posh or RP compared to them. Mm-hmm. Wait, what does RP mean? Received pronunciation. And that's just a, like a middle class accent, isn't it? That's middle theater, class, yeah. That's what you were meant to do. Yeah. Well, there's loads of... Um... Like Leslie Phillips, you know who was? Yes. British comedy legend. Yes. You know, he died at like 98 recently. Yeah. yeah. But his whole act for the, throughout his whole career was this sort of, played this like t- sort of dishonest posh guy. And he was always that catch like, oh, yes, yeah, sorry. Yeah. And was always trying to fuck people over. But yeah, yeah. he was actually just like, um, like a fishmonger's son or something. Right. Okay. And yeah. his voice was actually Cockney. But to have a career, he changed, changed it. And I didn't, most people just assumed he was this posh guy. That's yeah, so yeah, impressive. Yeah. Because yeah. <clears throat> English was the fourth language I learned to speak. My mum first heard me speak English properly with my friends when I was about seven or eight years old. Mm. And I had like an Essex twang. Mm. Essex East London hybrid. Yeah. I can't really do it anymore. And she got so angry with me. Can you do an impression of her getting angry with you? Because I can't. <laughs> Ishan, how bloody dare you sound no, like that? That's not how she said it, Ishan. <laughs> My mum actually used to read the, read, uh, read the news for the BBC World Service. Really? Yeah. Fuck, that's wicked. In, in Bangladesh, 16, 17. That's what she, she had in, one of those. In the year 1617. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> age 16, His mum is. Age 1617. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's she fucking used, awesome. She used to read, she had this like, the BBC World, World Service. Service. Yeah. She did all that shit. Nice. So she had a very classical kind of. Like, yeah, classic kind of colonial accent. version of What's funny now is middle class people try and change their voice to, to yes. find their career and they're like, yeah, is it good? And you're like, what the fuck? Yeah, yeah. You went what? to Eton. Yeah, I know. It's bizarre. Also, middle class people do this thing of like trying to look poor. Mm-hmm. Like, wh- why? Because no one gives a fuck about the story of I came from uh, success and I just made more of it. Yeah, what they yeah, like yeah. is, did you know Alan Sugar, when he was eight, his best friend was a rat and, you know, yeah, 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 yeah. and then he built himself up. 
It's a better story. They go out of their way to look shit, and I'm just like, why? Just because everyone wants to be what they're not, you know. The thing is, is if if I came from that stock, mm. I would fucking swing my dick around all the time. Which stock? Like stock of like Eaton. Yeah, 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 yeah. All that much gen- intergenerational wealth. Yeah, I think there's way too much expectation in people to be humble. Fuck humility. Yeah, humility it's just but everyone wants a story, you know. It's yeah. not. It's a better story. Yeah. The sort of. The broken home, hard life yeah. to success. Just fetishizing poverty constantly. Yeah. And yeah, struggle. It's so boring. It is so boring. Mm-hmm. Like, if you haven't had it, you haven't had it. It's fine. Like, yeah. whatever. But I think a lot of people just are obsessed with this idea of celebrities being humble and celebrities not... Cele- I want celebrity to fuck up. It's a fucked up thing to be a celebrity. Mm-hmm. It's madness. Do, yeah. do the drugs. Do whatever you need to do. Just Punch the air stewardess on the flight. Yeah. It, Prosecco <laughs> took yeah. ten minutes Say, too long. Why is this <laughs> cold? I know what you mean. I do. I miss the days when people just behave like absolute pigs. Yeah. <laughs> Me too. That's what sets them apart. I know. It was more fun. It's funny. All these um, so like Motley Crue have had to like re-edit their book because there's so much stuff that now is like not acceptable. <laughs> yeah, but this is but why? Because that should be like a snapshot of the time. Yeah, it's frozen in well, time. It's probably because they admitted to crimes. <laughs> yeah. There was a story uh, in yeah, it fine. where one of them was sleeping with someone in the dark and they'd sneak in and then switch. Oh, like, that is. That is, um, yeah. They also were like, a logistical this wild prank. <laughs> yeah, but it is logistically quite tricky to pull off, isn't it? Yeah, I don't think she must have known. I think she was like, yeah, good prank, guys. <laughs> Fuck I it wanted out. to fuck all the band. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'm sure they're all out of it as well. I doubt they're like Fred Astaire, you know? <laughs> Matt, see, in the dark, I hear less as well. Mm. Like, the the darkness. Oh, because you need a hearing aid. I, I need hearing aids. Good mm. to know if we ever gangbang you, Shen. <laughs> <laughs> so you know. We can, we can, if I'm, I'm ever fucking I'm you and, want someone, and I get tired and want <laughs> yeah. someone to take over, just we... switch off. Yeah, the I, can't, yeah, I can't hear you coming in. Just bang oh, and see you. You'll just say, Bobby, have you gotten smaller? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. smaller inside of me. <clears throat> Doing things in the dark is very hard. What? I'm not condoning what they did, but I'm just no, saying... No, no, no. I know. Very, yeah. It's... Imp- Doing stuff in the dark is impossible. Mm. Yeah, there was a book I read. It was called Wise Children by Angela something. I was... Lansbury. What no. a great story, Red. No, Angela it was... Hartner. But there's a bit in it. No, what... a book I read. Something by it someone. Was... No, we had to do it for GCSE. <laughs> but there's a whole bit in it where they... so they're two twin girls and they one has a boyfriend. Where the other is this one... going? Uh, as I speak, it will go there. <laughs> um, one has a boyfriend, and she's like, "I want to sleep with your boyfriend," and she's like, "Okay, let's switch." And so he thinks I'm you. And we, when we did a paper on it, this was in GCSE. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What? We did a paper on it. it might have been A level. I can't remember. Okay, yeah. hard, we did a paper on it, and the question is exam on it. And the exam question was like, "How have they reclaimed and like screwed over masculinity by doing that?" And it's like they haven't. They he haven't. wouldn't give a flying fuck. No, of course he wouldn't. <laughs> He'd love it. He'd be like, yeah, oh, this is the no. dream. The <laughs> twins. I slept with <laughs> How twins. How could I have done? Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> so that was funny. I don't. Uh, I don't. Have you ever watched twin porn? Or like lesbian porn. No, why would you do that? It's incest. No, but it's not. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I mean, you can't fake twins, (laughs) Isha. Well, they no, but they go. Oh, I think what you mean is like stepbrother and stepsister. Yeah, 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 all that kind of shit. Wait, yeah, yeah. yeah. How has this came independently? Jody brought this up a couple weeks ago. Yeah, we, we keep having this on the podcast. Jody, what Jody is watches it? incest cottage. Our on, on. guests always bring up incest pornography. Really? Is it, is it a running theme? There's of a running well, theme. It was not, we were trying to stop it from running, <laughs> actually. <laughs> wait, wait. What was your observation on incest pornography? No, I was just going to say, like, I mean, I'd ne- I've never found it f- fun. No, and it's okay, a big... I'm sure <laughs> that's what you were going to say. <laughs> Oh, I was just going to say, why does it exist? Yuck. What a load of crock of shit. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, disgusting. Uh, Oh, I puked. What else happened in 1985? 1985, (laughs) so, Paul McCartney was friends with Michael Jackson. Yes. And uh, he said to Michael Jackson, what you need to do is invest your money in stuff. Yes. Um, You need to invest in things and buy and own your own copies of stuff like that. So Michael Jackson then goes... Uh, on Paul McCartney's advice and buys uh, the majority of the Beatles back catalog. <laughs> <laughs> is that true? For, yeah, for $45 million at the time. That and is so amazing. so Paul McCartney was like, you've f- just fucked me completely. <laughs> 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 so funny. What's the matter? Uh, Jacko, that <laughs> it is was good. He's like, I don't even know what I'm doing. What's going on? Yeah, yeah. I, he was a shrewd little fuck, wasn't yeah, he? Yeah, he was. No, it was probably like, this guy's giving me advice. 
thinking I don't already know how to invest? Yeah, 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 yeah. I'll yeah. show him. That is amazing. Well, the sad stories was about Whitney Houston and how she basically died broke, despite mm. despite being like one of the only artists to have three like multiple diamond selling albums. Why did she? Have, did she fucking out. I will always love you is the single most selling. Whatever from Single. female artist. There was Candle in the Wind, probably. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like, right. Yeah. Well, yeah biggest yeah. ever. But she had no money because she just didn't look at the contracts properly. So mm. she didn't own the rights to her own songs. Yeah. So she just. She just. Yeah. And it's horrible that that can happen. I know. It's, it's How cool. can Whitney Houston be broke? Well, someone signs her at 17 and goes, hey, here's the numbers. Look at this. And yeah. Yeah. It. Whatever. I think it's quite uh, sinister, sorry, slightly off topic, but how Elton John, every time someone dies, just re-releases, re-releases that song. Is By the way, this is the song for this. This, yeah, this yeah. This is yeah. the official when song sad, for this death. Yeah. When there's a sad, yeah. this is what you play. Diana's died, so this is Rocket the official Man. song. I think it's great marketing. I respect no, it more. It's brilliant, because he goes, no, it's, this is the song. What? It's like it's like the It's Coming Home of Grief, that song. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> what song would you have as, as your funeral song? Um... Who let the dogs out? Yeah, okay. <laughs> All right, yeah, right. Uh, well, it's really awkward when you have the same song as someone else. <laughs> uh, I don't really, I don't have a song in mind, but I'm just going to say if, if, if my song was also "Who Let the Dogs Out," I couldn't say. What about that? No, I'd Ro- feel Robin Thick. What was that song? Bloodlines. Bloodlines. That's Bobby's song. That's Bobby. That is not Bloodlines. my song. That's the opposite of my song. The very you clear, know you clear lines. <laughs> clear you lines. Know I got it. No clear lines. My song is clear lines. No blurred lines. <laughs> clear lines. Consent. I think those two songs together, "Blurred Lines" and "Who Let the Dogs Out," opening and closing your funeral is a great vibe. I think if you have those as your opening no. close, there'll be no one at your funeral. funeral yeah. you were such that sort no, of guy. As 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 the people. People walk into the funeral, blurred lines is played, and they're like, what the what fuck? The fuck? Yeah. And then, open casket, everyone walks by, and the second they close the casket and start the funeral, they close this casket, and then who let, who let the, the dogs dog. out? Just blares out the speaker. <laughs> that That's so, an awesome funeral. That is a good funeral. Yeah. I'd go to that funeral. Yeah. I went to um, Paul Byrne's funeral, and he had Burn Baby Burn as his, as his thing. He? As he got cremated. Yeah, I thought that was cool. That is, that yeah. is cool, actually. <laughs> okay. Fun. So in 1985, mm-hmm. I don't know if I've never even heard of this new Coca Cola. Have you heard about this new Coca Cola? So Coca Cola's sales were dropping, yeah, and yeah. they decided that their Coke was too unhealthy. People started drinking like um, kombucha, yeah, just like diet drinks and stuff yeah. like that. So they launched New Coke, and it was hit with a huge backlash in the South of America uh, because they thought that it, uh, it represented like. The North, and it was this part of this new, like, not I, I, woke wasn't the word back then, but yeah. this new healthy thing. And so they had uh, 40,000 complaints. Yeah, some viewed it the, the change through the prism of the Civil War as a surrender to the Yankees. And because Pepsi was based in Purchase, New York, they felt that they were bowing to Pepsi by trying to make Coke healthier. The company received over 40,000 calls, letters expressing anger or disappointment, including one letter a to Chief Dodo, the chick, the Coca-Cola company. Another letter to ask for the uh, head of Coca-Cola's uh, autograph because he wanted to have the signature of one of the d- dumbest executives in American business history. So Coke, there was such a backlash in the South that they had to change it back to Fizzy Coke. But wait, was New Coke... Oh, so it, was, it wasn't Fizzy? No, it's new, they had to change it back to the old Coke. Old with Coke. The, all, for, oh. So now Coca-Cola says classic Coca-Cola on it. That is right. a re- <clears throat> that's a response. But to- was New Coke, um, like just Diet Coke? Yeah, it was less sugar. Um- well, like what is now called Diet yeah, Coke. Yeah, probably. Yeah, yeah. Wait, probably. Probably. <laughs> what about Coke Zero? There's like, a rule okay. we have in this podcast, which is never ask questions. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because the researcher, whoever's so- doing the research. Can't answer the Fidel question. Fidel Castro, a long-time Coca-Cola drinker, yeah, <laughs> uh, went fucking ballistic, calling New Coke a sign of American capitalist decadence. Capitalist decadence. So Castro wasn't happy. People were fuck- absolutely. I, I mean, I'm addicted to Coke. If you drink a few Cokes a day, and then they change the recipe, it'd be fucking infuriating. I get where Fidel was coming from. But completely. then, uh, hold on. But then, so- I, I disagree with Fidel Castro on a lot of things. I like the dude. Okay, but I. <laughs> But I didn't understand. They tried to make it healthy and everyone got upset. Yeah. Yes. And they didn't like the taste. Someone tried to... Um, okay. America is fucking called, weird, isn't a it? A man called Gay Mullins, <clears throat> a Seattle 
retiree. I don't know what he's else he did before he retired. Tried to <laughs> he, he tried to file a class action lawsuit against Coca Cola, <laughs> and the judge dismissed it and said that he preferred the taste of Pepsi anyway. Which what I mean, the we all fuck is going I, I on. It's at, that is insane. America, man, is. As a kid, you dream of going to America. You're like, one day I want to go to yeah. the big bright lights of New York. And then you grow the fuck up. And you're like, there is no <laughs> way I'm going to go to that shithole of a country. Well, it is. It's the, they, they've managed to pump this. We're the best in the world. The wildlife looks good. The sort of... Did you know in America, judges are elected? Yeah. What do you mean? So, like, like you can pick the... the, P, the locals judge. pick who the judge is. That's fucking So, crazy. if you, like, if you yeah. go soft on a case or something, they're like, well, you're out next time. Mm-hmm. That's mad. It's madness, isn't it? I don't know. I understand how that country operates. It just drives me. The older I get, the more scared I get of it. Bobby's yawning. Have you been it's to? Great. Oh, I'm be... having a great time. I yawn it'll, sometimes. It'll be, it'll be, it'll be, it passes out. I'm halfway having a great. Through. I mean, I'm having a great time. <laughs> a personally. couple weeks ago, I I passed out, and it I, no one will let me forget it. I just, Who was I was, on? Who was the guest? Uh, there was no, no guest. No guest. I was no. just hit by tiredness, and I couldn't stay <laughs> awake. Has that ever happened to you? Where you just get like consumed by tiredness? Yeah. Well, talking of candle in the wind, 1985, Muhammad Al Fayed oh, bought Harrods. Legend. Were you a big Al Fayed fan? Big Al Fayed fan. Yeah. Yes. I loved Al Fayed, and uh. We, basically, my mum used to take me to Harrods every year for the sales. <laughs> every day. <laughs> <laughs> every year for the sales. And I met him four times. No way. Four times I met Mohammed Alfred. Really? And the fourth time, he gifted my brother, my younger brother, a little toy Porsche. No way. Yeah. Yeah. I know him for his later work where he accuses the royal family of murdering his son. <laughs> well, yeah. uh, that's more and I really I really respect how he just stuck with it. Yeah, yeah, he yeah. He kind of yeah, torpedoed yeah. his entire being a billionaire yeah. thing just like you killed my fucking kid. And mm, and yeah, I yeah. I if I I'd, I'd have a drink with that guy. Yeah, growing up my mum always used to be like be like Dodie Alfayed. Really? He's so charming, good looking. That's why he can attract a princess. Uh, I can have died. So was he, yeah. And why did you love Harrod so much? Just the gifts and stuff. M- Mum liked it. She used to buy her bone china from there. Yeah. Uh, during the sales. And then we just it was just like a, a jaunt to go yeah, to yeah. Harrods back then. Well, I remember going as a kid. And kids, it was just yeah. this massive thing. I'd go to the food hall and it was just like. And the whole thing was you can buy a lion from Harrods if you want. Like you, know, you yeah. can buy anything if you have the money. It was just nice to like, it was like a day out for us to just go and see all this stuff. And whatever. and how did you, did you just pick up a Porsche your brother and go? Yeah. So I was outside. My brother was in his, uh, in his push chair. And, uh, Mo, as I called him. Really? Uh, no, I didn't. Uh, Uncle Mo. And then he, he saw us. He goes, oh, nice to see you again. Like, he remembered my mum, because my mum was just like a very charming woman. Mm. Uh, and he goes, wait there, wait there. And then he talked to someone. Some guy ran, came back, handed him a portion in a, in a box. And you didn't get one? I didn't get one. You were stood right there? Yeah, I was stood. Was that not fucking gutting? Because you've it, met it him four gutting. times, and yeah. you can actually I got remember him. him. And his arm is in a wheelchair. I think- not wheelchair. Push, <laughs> push chair. <laughs> <laughs> the only, actually, the only thing I got gifted from uh, Daddy Alfred was from the food hall. He gave me. <laughs> <laughs> he, he, he picked up this, um, like a cannoli type thing, but a soft cannoli. Yeah. So he gave me one of those. Fucking hell. Yeah, so Mohammed Alfred and I go back a long way. Cause I, so I watched The Crown. Wait, you meet, wait did you meet Dodie? No, I never met Dodie. Sad. In The Crown, it's all sort of him trying to <clears throat> get him with the royal family, and that's why he buys Harrods because he wants. He he loved British like yeah. Oh, culture. I, I feel like that's a repainting of the, history. No, probably. but you no, know, he was he was a huge Anglophile and yeah. like loved the British royal family and stuff like that. Yeah, and a lot of the like when I say a lot of them, what I mean is internationally, people are drawn to British brands like that, like Selfridges and Bro- Brompton bikes and yeah. stuff like that, Fortnum and Mason. So yeah, for him, it was like I want. Harrods, yeah, that yeah, is where the Queen shop because that's where I'll be legitimate. Where did he make his money? What was his? I'm not sure. I did. Was it oil? Am I just stereotyping Bitcoin, him because he's like Middle East? Meth. I don't know. Um, I'm just looking now. Uh, have a look. What yeah, did, where did Dodie did Mohammed... get his? Not Dodie. Mo. Mo. Mohammed Al Fayed. Mohammed Al Fayed. Egyptian born. Yeah. Harrods. Oh, you remember when he owned Fulham and he put up a post yes. of Michael, a statue Mike, of Michael, Michael Jackson. Jackson? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just nothing to do with yeah, the club. Absolute <laughs> madness. Jean Tigana was the manager then at the time, I think, as far as memory, if memory serves. He worked with his wife, brother, Saudi Arabian arms dealer and businessman. <laughs> Adnan Khashoggi. Is that any relative oh, relation of the, yeah, yeah, of the guy, Jamal? Of the guy who got killed? Yes, Jamal. Is it Jamal that Khashoggi's might be a, brother? Might be a comment. Or dad's. 
Jamal Khashoggi yes. was connected. That's why he we was, got uh, to be. He's paternal he uncle of murder journalist Jamal Khashoggi. Wow! Should have stuck to selling guns, Jamal. You might have been, you know, yeah, shoot Jamal. your way out that one. Was you stupid? Oh, I've got a moral backbone like Bobby Mayer. <laughs> I have no moral backbone. <laughs> Therefore, I'm gonna fucking My be God. a journalist. <laughs> I I thought they just killed. I didn't know he was that sort of connected and powerful. The guy. Wow. That, well, that's why it was such a betrayal because he was in the club. Oh, okay. Right. Wow. That is interesting. Oh, so Alfie's brothers bought the house of Fraser in the eighties. Fucking, that's a bit of a step down from Harry. It is a bit of a step down. <laughs> Imagine their mum yeah. just crying at the yeah. house of Frasier when they're selling like polo tees, and she's like, "Your brother has Harrods." Uh, Harrods. I remember when that place closed or whatever got sold, and then uh, it's like, "Yeah, yeah." Well, I don't know anyone who's ever been there, so I can't really see it succeeding as a business. Doesn't exist anymore. Yeah, I think yeah. it is. Fraser. Every time I walk yeah, past an Oliver bonus. Um, I'll tell you what. Walk past an Oliver Bonus. Yeah. Um, I just think Matt Hancock stole your wife. Why? And <laughs> stole your stole your wife while he was at the prime of being hated and, hated, and yeah. incompetent, like loser. Yeah. And his wife's like, like, "Yeah, I want that one." Yeah. I mean, I like Ed Sheeran. <laughs> <laughs> They were child. They were childhood lovers, weren't they? No, they went to uni together, and he couldn't shag her, and then he got the job, and then could shag her. Probably that's what I assume. That's me putting yeah, stuff together. Yeah. Well, I mean, it checks. Mm. Doesn't it? It checks because if we, they were uni together, nothing happened. Yeah, and suddenly he's a failing health sector, and she's like, "Yeah, I'm interested now." He's such a piece of shit. He's a when he when someone was leaving the love, um, not Love Island, Jungle, Jungle, and he's like, "I can't remember which goes." He goes, "Tell her I love her." Just tell her I love her. It's like you're on TV, Please. yeah, you fucking was... idiot. Uh, did you see that video a couple of weeks ago where he was like, "I'm just a normal guy." I'm yeah, just, just a normal, just a normal guy. guy. Like a I, pint. I, I like a pint. I, I like that when else. you put beer up to there in the glass. I like that. Yeah. And what's that thing with the ball and the stick? Sticks, I, I've, yeah, I've I like played that, that before. Yeah. 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 Unbelievable. <clears throat> yeah. He, he, he's a he's bulletproof though. Do you see him made that he's making TikToks? He goes when I uh, when I hear from va people who hate me because of the vaccine or something. My vaccine haters, and he's like, I don't care, and it's like dumb dumb. Oh it's, my god! It's, it's absolutely gross. It, does she? Do you think there's a point where she looks at me and goes? What the no, fuck? No, I think they're I probably do? both psychopaths, and that's what draws really? them mm, to each mm. other. Because you, you have, have, to, be. Was you have to be to be with to, yeah, to be is. attracted to Matt Hancock. You have to be a psychopath. Imagine turning around to your kids. You're not Oliver Bonus. She's not coming back. You know, <laughs> you've been a hard day selling weird merch that no one quite knows what you sell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And then yeah. Wait, do you, sell? you yeah. have to turn around and go, kids, mummy's fucking Matt Hancock. <laughs> <laughs> also. Also for the kids, that sticks with them oh, forever. Grim. Even people felt bad for his ex-wife, but I'm like, his ex-wife still married Matt Hancock. Yeah. I don't give a fuck about yeah, this lady. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You met Matt Hancock, and you're like, you're the one for me, Matty boy. <laughs> yeah, I want to marry you. I'm so glad he left you. That's what you get for marrying Matt, Matt Hancock. Hancock. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Fuck yeah. me. I hope you have to fucking drive an Uber. The uh, the kiss was pretty gross, and he had the horrible hand on the bum, didn't he? Red, I can see what website you're on. Red, Red's no, on no, a no, website that... called. No, the year no, 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 1985. No, no, no. But I made a link of it. Look, so look. I, you made a link. Get, no, because the, I decided there's so much fun in here that we could just read through it. But also, that video of them kissing was horrific because it looked like like two six four was making. Yeah, it. yeah. <laughs> they had never kissed Wait, before. Wait, so you do you open your mouth? My brother told me you have to put your tongue like this and go. <laughs> like, yeah, it's disgusting. It and like he was grabbing. Uh, her ass like she was falling or something like it was really <laughs> quite embarrassing it yeah it was it was <laughs> at the time when everyone's in lockdown that's yeah. how we all look though it's terrible like there's this idea that we i never want to see a video of myself fucking anyone <laughs> have you have you ever seen a video of you i've seen no. i've seen a clip or two what, what and it was it wasn't good I it have was really of, up. of me. Have you ever recorded no, yourself having no. sex? Have you Red is a fifties yeah. dad. He, Red's never had sex. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when did you record yourself? I, I've been a couple of exes with with whom we we just set a camera up and. Uh, and what have you done with the tapes? This is delete. Well, let's give them to Patreon. For anyone yeah. for the Patreon, you can watch Ishan. I, well, I hope they're deleted because I trust entrusted her with deleting it. Oh my god! <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> and burning her <laughs> own eyes. <laughs> the thing is, if here's the thing, if let's say. I go on to do something where someone feels compelled to want to release the sex tape. Mm. And I was you in a piggy shit. mask. You're, I, you're hosting this morning. But, but that... <laughs> the woman in the tape. She's she's also in the tape. <laughs> I don't think she wants it out there either. Yeah, getting pounded by a walrus. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> You'd have to be a pretty famous walrus <laughs> for her to want it out there. Or <laughs> hearing me deep breathing, just trying to get some air into my lungs. So I want fit. <laughs> <laughs> the sex tape no one wants it. it. <laughs> yeah. It those... becomes a public health warning. Mm. Yes, my kids. <laughs> Quit smoking. I don't smoke. Why do you think I smoke? <laughs> that was funny when Kim Kardashian was like, people complaining need to get the fuck up and do some work. Do you hear that? And she's like, <laughs> yeah, get yeah, up. Yeah, and yeah. It was like you were born into millions. And, yeah. then, and even with your privileged position and all your family connections, you still had to suck someone off on camera yeah, to, make, to it. make it work. Yeah, yeah. That's how little talent she had. Yeah. She was best friends with Paris Hilton. Yeah. You know, her dad got off OJ. If her dad knows OJ, he knows most lizards in the world, you know. Yeah. You, and also, your, your dad was involved in, like, probably one of the most high profile cases of all time. All time. Yes. Yet you're still, with all those connections, your only off. choice is a camcorder in a fucking holiday inn. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Absolutely. You're right. She's, uh, she did she's roll doing, with it. Once. She's doing good work now, though, isn't she? She's, like, helping. And she's got half a law degree, and everyone calls her a lawyer. She's yeah. not completed her like foundation year at university. No, she hasn't. <laughs> she, she's be- basically like, I think she spent four years on one year. She's like Van Wilder, but, <laughs> but a billionaire. <laughs> <laughs> what would it like if you turned up to class and Kim Kardashian sat there learning about tort law with you? Mm, she doesn't go to class. She go to class. <laughs> she's not in class. Not with some like undergraduate. It's like, yeah, I'm doing law, yeah. <laughs> 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 Yo, I'd, I'd take my shot actually I'd say hey you dated that uh, Pete Davidson guy right she'd be like mm-hmm. yeah I'm like I'm mentally ill in a lot of the same ways he is I think we might get along <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah 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 but yeah. you don't have the, the same bank account I don't think no no yeah Pete Davidson's got, he got a, he got a kid's names tattooed on him which I just think is weird. weird it's always weird you never do that no. never get your step children unless you've been around like the dad died of a smack overdose when they were three and as you you want to go look I am you know but don't just move in and two weeks later get the names. Apparently, Pete Davidson's got a massive dick. Well, I don't think that's a surprise, is it? That's, that's He's got to have something. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, yeah. He, Ariana, he dated everyone. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's yeah. mad. Oh, we've we've covered much yeah, of his, much of t- okay. his uh, sex on this show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. His prowess. Average <laughs> monthly rent in an 85 is $325, which I suppose is about £160. Today, would you say three hundred twenty-five dollars? A bit more. When I was young, I remember the dollar to the pound was like it was like sixty pence or something, fifty-five pence. Yes. Now I think it's so. I don't even look. It's too depressing. Seventeen pounds. Yeah. Yeah. I saw a headline the other day. It's like recession coming. I'm like, what? What do you call it? Whatever this is now. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, yeah. Also, we've been in recession for a long Mm. time. Have you noticed everything in the shops has just doubled quickly, like overnight? Yeah. Like Hagen Dars has gone from like four fifty. <laughs> <laughs> the Red Richards and Hagen Dars index. To six fifty. This, this is how is, I measure this, this how I this measure is, the price. This is when when the economic crisis hits home <laughs> And that is the price of ice cream for yeah, red. Yeah. It's specifically we, I can't, I can't live like this. Yeah. I can't fucking live like this. You mean I have to pay for Ben and Jerry's yeah, twice? It's, it's Fuck. Not good. I'm not paying nine pounds for ice cream. <laughs> so what is I'm that? I'm a burned up parliament. I'm a communist now. <laughs> how, de- how big is the ice cream? What are we talking about? At the same pot? time, they Milk haven't reduced tub. the size. And luck- how luckily, it it's like six fifty. Six pounds. And how much were you used to pay? Oh, you, you, on, on a good day, four. you get it for three or four. Three. Yeah. Yeah. Now six fifty. Now six fifty in the space of months. So I'll be there behind the nurses. <laughs> just for the How fucking day! <laughs> this, this. I used to be able to eat ice cream whenever I wanted, and now I can have one tub a day only, and I have to budget for it. And for, <laughs> I want to kill the king. What? what Give flavor? me some of your money. What flavor do you go for? Um, pralines and cream depends what mood I'm in. You know, pralines well, and cream. I think that. Actually, Salty actually, caramel's wh- great. When, no, now he doesn't even get to choose the flavor. Now it's just whatever is on sale. Is, yeah, yeah. But actually, it is interesting. It's facetious, to sure. But, but which ones did you say? Pralines and Pralines cream. Pralines and cream, salt caramel. Salt caramel. Now, uh, sugar has become more expensive. Yeah. Uh, and because of Brexit, there's been a real shock to the system in terms of importing it's sugar. It's not Brexit. <laughs> it's Meghan Markle. But it's carry Meghan on. Markle. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, because of Meghan Markle. So actually... The Hagen Dazs index could work. 
I think yeah, yeah, yeah. I think you should set up the Harley Davidson. Ah, Index. see, so this is good to have someone with brain on here because <laughs> he. What did you used to do? You with said with brain, with, not with brains. brains. <laughs> with brain, with brain. With brain on here. It's good to have someone with brain on <laughs> here. Finally, an intellectual <laughs> <laughs> like myself. <laughs> yeah. um, what did you used to do? You were banker. I was a private banker. Yeah, to the stars. To the stars. I was a private banker. Did, for give years. us the dirt. Give us the dirt. I, I mean, I can't. You know, but I loved. But of... that's. Were you more less? the economic side of it more like a face-to-face guy like char like were you a se- were you selling or were you you know what i mean so i was i was designing their portfolios helping design their portfolios and make investments on their behalf and okay do that kind of shit uh, i read economics at university see so the hagen does thing is a real thing because the there's something called the big <laughs> mac index do you know about the big mac index no so the big mac index has existed for since about i think the 80s uh, and it is used as a measure of something called purchasing power parity. Yeah. And purchasing power parity is when basically whether what a dollar gets you in America, in Bangladesh, and you use a Big Mac uh, index to say, well, for $1, you can get one Big Mac in America, but in Zimbabwe, you can get 17. Mm-hmm. It gives you a sense of how much, how far that dollar's going to go. So Big Mac index already exists, but the Hagen Dazs index... Yeah. I think would be particularly interesting, not least because of, <laughs> not least because of the associated cost of freezing, mm-hmm. maintaining a hug and dance, yeah, the yeah, ingredients yeah. that go into it, uh, milk, uh, cows, all that kind of shit. I think there's quite an interesting oh, potential. Oh, I like this. Potential uh, to make a good, interesting. That's eight, 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 we're at eight tubs if I could <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Jesus. Okay, so <clears throat> a gallon of gas was a dollar, one dollar nine cents. Okay. Uh, which is so what we're at now we're fucked now aren't we it's, <laughs> it's funny when Ukraine Russia first invaded Ukraine everyone was like you know the Ukraine flag and it's slowly as people are paying more fuel uh, they've gone mm. is it worth it and they're like well NATO there was a little NATO aggression you know you hear that's creepy did you see recently the Ukrainian athlete refused to shake hands with an Iranian <laughs> no, why? <laughs> well, Iran's selling, they're selling drones to Russia. Right, okay, yeah. Is fine. that it, or was he racist? Was no, he... that's it. They're mm. sell- well, you could also be racist. Mm. <laughs> they're selling drones to Russia, that's why. Yeah, fine. Oh, really? I didn't know that. Yeah. And India, uh, selling, what's going on there? They're still buying oil, that's why everyone's angry. Yeah. yeah, they're buying oil. Yeah, but, I mean, after what the British have done to India, it would be insane for it India to then be like... It was a long time ago. <laughs> 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 like, yo, Britain, let's help you out for a chance. Yeah, yeah, Fuck yeah. that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Fuck yeah. that. India can look out for itself. Yo, I get yo, it. Britain, what do you need? Mm, let us know. Mm. Yeah. We've got Ed Sheeran doing a benefit for them, and India's just. Yeah, gonna... yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, cost of a new house. Average cost of a new house, $89,000, which what is 40 grand now? Yeah. Fuck's sake. Fucking hell. What would that get you now? And that's like a night out in Mayfair. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Well, what would 40 grand get you now? Probably the. Probably the worst house. Do we need to Google you this? You could buy a parking spot. That's yeah. what you could buy for 40 buy grand. Well, that's what's funny. Not is... even in London. A parking spot in Guildford. Guildford. I yeah. looked to rent a parking spot because I can't get one in my house flat. And uh, it was £320 a month. What? Which here, average rent is $325. So, you know, we're, we're looking bad. So, you ha- sorry. So, in your flat, you mm. haven't got a parking space. So, you've got to try and rent it. Well, because it's a new build, they said. Because we're eco-friendly, we don't give parking spaces. Oh, yeah, because you're eco-friendly. No, because they, <laughs> yeah. they couldn't get planning from it. Yeah, they can't be fucked. Can't, you know? yeah. it, probably, it probably would cost them more money to, you know, get it sorted. Oh, so, I don't yeah, we can't. these problems. I've got a driveway. No, that's good. <laughs> that's good. <laughs> New car, $9,000. Two, two car driveway. That doesn't well, seem... park one car because it's quite a big car. Wait, you can say you new car, mean, but, but you do live with your dad, don't you, Ishan? No, my dad is with me. <laughs> oh, I see, I see. It's a very different different setup. Back to the Future came out, never really got oh, a shit about film. film. <laughs> okay. The hoverboards, that's all I remember. Yeah, I know was about four. Wait, does your dad live with you? Yeah. You moved him in? Yes. You said, Dad, I got this. I got I got you, Daddy. That's you, sweet. You've worked way too hard. Yeah. Uh, his I, house got repossessed in 1991, and we've been living in rented accommodation my whole childhood, pretty much. Got kicked out by so many landlords. Yeah, we got, mm. we were back up when I was a kid too. Yeah. So many landlords, and as soon as I got into a bit of money, bought a house and said, "Dad, don't worry about it." And do you uh, do you have house rules though? Are you firm? Are you a firm <laughs> what do you mean? 
Um, yeah. As a landlord, he, as a landlord, you know, you're the landlord. You could evict him at any yeah, time. He not, needs to know he, that. He's, he's like, not get to, up. He's not allowed to fuck. Stop, okay. stop wanking and clean your room. Yeah. Clean <laughs> your room. Sit around. Daddy. I'm watching those dirty <laughs> movies. She said, like, listen, the common areas are looking a little messy lately. Yeah, what's going on here? Does his uh, aunt live there as well? He's moved back after his divorce, yeah. Nice, he's nice. Back, so the three boys in the house having a lovely time. That's yeah. great. Do you all get on? Yeah, we do. It's nice. Great. Lovely setup. It's very interesting because when I was growing up as a teenager, I used to be obsessed with the, uh, uh, this idea of independence. You've got to live by yourself, mm-hmm. do your own thing, whatever. But as I get older, I'm like, people are dying because of this. People are dying because they're so obsessed mm. with just being in the... Do be your own space, by all means. But your family... And your inner circle needs to be nearby, particularly if you get on with them. It mm-hmm. makes life a lot easier. But it's just this... I think partly it's driven by the fact that because my mum died, mm-hmm. I want my dad closer. I don't yeah, know fair enough. time's going to come. You know? That's nice. Almost too nice for this podcast. Almost too nice for this podcast, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But yeah that's good. There is some rules. I hit him. Good. <laughs> Every day. Yeah. As he walks in to remind him. That's his rent. I saved his fucking life. Takes a couple pelts from his son. <laughs> Beverly Hills Hot Cop came out. Oh. That was a great movie. Yeah. It's weird. I was. I actually watched that with my mum a few years ago. Like, And we're watching it and she's like, he's like 22 in this movie. And it was about, I was about the same age. I'm like, he's already done Raw Delirious. He's starring in Beverly Hills Cop. Yeah. And you just go, ah, oh, I'm a loser. Well, he's the most talented person, one of the most talented people ever. Yeah. To be on camera. Yeah, Eddie, Eddie Murphy, Murphy was like ridiculous. Like, I'm insatious. Like, phenomenon. The one person who I do think doesn't get enough kudos is Jamie Foxx. Oh, he's the best. Jamie Foxx is unbelievable. And I don't think he's ever quite reached the Eddie Murphy levels of fame. But, with well, success. He... because you nail a load of things well, and he's done them really well. But Eddie Murphy was such a, what, you know? He great. Was yeah. Eddie Murphy was a great stand up and then a great comedic actor. Whereas Jamie Foxx was a bad stand-up, but then an incredible dramatic actor. So it's just a more... And singer. And singer. But and he's an impressionist. Not, but, but the thing is, he's not the best singer and he's not the best actor. He's great, but he's not the best. The top. He's not Whereas the Eddie best Murphy was actor. the best. He, uh, interesting. Eddie Murphy was the funniest actor. Yeah. yeah. That's interesting. Okay. It's like if Michael Jackson could play ping pong at, like, county level. You'd still go, but, you know, don't really care. That's a good talent. That's a good talent. <laughs> But, I mean, that's a terrible analogy. Uh, Jamie Foxx won no. Grammys and Oscars. Yeah. So. Yeah. 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 He probably has an EGOT. Yeah. But also, you know, he's got a record for throwing, like, the longest yard pass at, um, at the university he went to. Re- yeah. Jamie Foxx? With American Fuck football, me. yeah. Really? Yeah, he's a fucking machine. He is a machine of a human being. Completely. It really seemed like he was going to die a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, mm. uh, that was all very weird, wasn't it? Being and then daughter? now he's not going to die, which is good. Yeah, but he hasn't really posted a video or anything, has he? No. Because his daughter no. was the one like, yeah, he's fine. No. He's keeping his head down. No, I thought it was he had a stroke, wasn't it? It did. That's I, I don't know if the specifics were released. Google it, Jody. What happened to Jody? And he did the song with Kanye. You know, that was like number one for yeah, months. Yeah, yeah. Gold digger. And I think when he did that, Ray had just come out. So he just won an Oscar. He must have felt pretty special in that period of time. I almost misheard you there. I thought you meant Ray of the dating app. <laughs> no, no, no. Ray, Ray the, the movie. Film. Yeah, the movie. And he was in Collateral. That was great. Yeah. How famous are the people? You always hear about Raya. People within comedy. Oh, yeah. There'll be yeah. whisperings I of know. Raya. I Who's know. on Raya? Ra- I know. Who's I on know. Raya? Some of Rosie's friends who have zero show business qualifications are on there. <laughs> yeah. Right. How? None. Because How do you, you get, get on? It's you get not referred. for famous people. It's basically for people. It's like Soho House. House, right. Yeah, you can get in if you know someone on the thing. Right, gotcha. It, but gotcha, you will gotcha. see, like, I know people who've seen, like, Channing Tatum on there and stuff, you mm. know? Oh, right. Yeah, the big yeah. Weeks. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, it's basically Channing. like, oh, I want to. D- what your space is saying is, I don't want to meet anyone who earns less than 100 grand a year and you can't be ugly. I don't even want to see your face when I'm swiping. You know, that's what Rose. I think my personality would carry me through. I'd find it difficult on. But there <laughs> must be some ugly people who are earning. There are, of course, there are ugly people. Who are yeah, but I through. think it's more like there is. I think there is a standard for looks. Because, and stuff. yeah, but then also, after a certain amount of money, you become fit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. To women, they're like, oh, okay. Yeah, like He's 120,000 pounds. <laughs> Hot. Thank you. I'm in. I've always aspired to that. When I used to work in Canary Wharf, me and my friends always used to play a game which was like, oh, is she fit or is she just wearing a really nice dress? Like, mm. what's going on here? Because the power makes someone even more attractive. There was one banker we were obsessed with. Mm. She wasn't objectively not an attractive person. But the lure of her but position. Lure, yeah. Oh, boy. We would have let her do anything to us. <laughs> Eddie Murphy has a bowling alley in his house. <laughs> <laughs> Was it?
was that your smooth transition? Yeah, that's me just getting, getting out of it. Yeah, he's got a bowling on him. That's pretty fucking cool, isn't it? <laughs> that's pretty there cool. was talk of him going back to stand up, but I don't think he's going to. He always yeah, says that. Every talk. couple of years he says that. He never does. Um, if you had that kind of money, right? Eddie Murphy money. Mm. Hundreds of millions. Hundreds of millions. What's the crazy thing you're putting in your house? Like, Not what? a bowling alley. That's boring. I'd have like, amazing a golf course. Thing. Love golf. I'd have a golf course. A outside, golf course. outside. Okay. But yeah, do you I play golf. Have, yes, love golf. Do you have a handicap? Uh, probably around like twenty twenty two. But I haven't. Wow, golfed, I haven't that golfed that much. That is good. I haven't golfed that much lately, so it wouldn't be. Wow, that's I would have good. a fish tank that went on all floors, like down all the. Oh, okay, that's yeah. pretty cool. That is it? pretty cool. <laughs> to but be fair. there's a no fish in it, so it's actually just water. Just bodies. <laughs> I can't, I, sp- I can't have the fish. Yeah, I've spent all the money. <laughs> okay. I just sort of pl- rotting human corpses but, that he's yeah, purchased. I tell you what it'd be. It, I, I, instead of that, <laughs> just, just no, it's not water. It's acid. Yeah, no, so you it's see slowly them just degrading. That's a- fucking crazy. What a crazy! You could do that legally, probably. That's a fucking crazy thing to do. Just whenever your relatives die, you put them in the <laughs> tank and then watch grandma slowly disintegrate <laughs> while you're watching TV. That's fucking awesome. That's not a fish. That's her toenail. Or yeah. I swim in the fish tank. There's nothing in it. It goes up five floors and surrounds every bedroom. Also, and so if you stare at my house, you might wake up in the morning <laughs> and I'm just, just with a snorkel just staring at you. <laughs> also, and your white briefs. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> bubbles going everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> I can swim, ar- swim around the house. Also, yeah. there's no stairs in the house, so if you want to get from floor one to floor two, get in the water yeah, and yeah. swim up. Swim up. Yeah. You could be doing a dump, and you just look up, and I'm just above you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't like seeing fish. I like seeing people. People. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I like yeah. being the fish, and I see you in the tank. <laughs> the tank. and the, the yes. tank's actually the house. Yes. You're, you're in the real tank, the tank. Yeah, which yeah. is life. <laughs> <laughs> It's like knives out, like another. Yeah, that's what I love. That. I can see Elon Musk having something like that. <laughs> you definitely have something like that. Okay, wow. <laughs> Do you want to know uh, the number one song of 1985? Oh, yes, please. Careless uh, Whisper, George Michael. Oh, what a classic. He is, you know, Andrew Ridgely, his uh, co partner, yes. was in Wham. Yes. Andrew Ridgely, well, he's the first to admit this. He's like, I didn't have much talent. <laughs> and he was like, I met George Michael, and George Michael was obviously George Michael. Yeah. One of the best voices in pop ever. Ever. Yeah. Great songwriter. Yeah. Um, and he was like, well, let's just be, you know, Wham. And he's like, I'll be wham. You know? Sure. <laughs> I'll, be, I'll, be, I'll be wham. So you go up to the mic and I'll stand here and I'll go, yeah. yeah. What go, does he, George. What, does he play an instrument or something? So I don't know. I don't want to say. <laughs> what does Andrew originally do? Basically, he um, just lives off because George Michael was like, let's just split it 50-50. So one of the most decent men who've ever lived. Um, singer, songwriter, musician. George Michael's mate. <laughs> <laughs> Friend to George he, Michael. He was in various musical groups, and then he, then he met George Michael. <laughs> His various musical groups don't have a have a blue blue line, line on Wikipedia blue hyperlink. But yeah, and he says that he um he uh yeah he was just um really generous because most uh, most other songwriters go well. This is I get the songwriting credits. Was George Michael didn't? Did just do fifty fifty? That's it, that. It is such good fortune, isn't it? If you do meet someone like that. Oh, I able... wish. I wish I'm I met hoping that. <laughs> what do you wish? That's what this podcast is, yeah. right? What am I, Andrew you, originally? Yeah. You're the, uh, yes. You're my, Jody is George you're, Michael. You're, uh, see, Red was my George Michael, to be honest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's what I was waiting for. <laughs> Jody is George Michael, and we're Andrew. Originally. Careless Whisper, um, Like a Virgin by Madonna. Okay. Number two. Yeah. Hot Big song. Hit. That was when she was uh, fit. Not a virgin, I don't think, either. Yeah, you know, she's, yeah. she was shagging Tupac. Oh, yeah, she was shagging yeah, Tupac. Yeah, she slept with quite a lot of, um, like, guy, like, Guy Ritchie was married to her. I can't yeah. remember who else there was. Uh, Sean Penn. Sean Penn. That is a great shout. That would be a Warren pub Beatty. quiz. Mm. I think they were married, weren't they? They he were. He assaulted her, didn't he? There was a, there was a rumor of yeah. assault. Are you, are you good at pub quizzes? Yeah, I've, I've won a few. Have you? I can <laughs> see that. I've won a few. Yeah, hell yeah. Wow. The fi- yeah. 50 pound bar tab. Yeah, no, I yeah. actually have. I've won quite a lot of them. Have you? Yeah, I've got a lot of pointless knowledge. <laughs> you got some, like, some of these names, Warren Beatty came out of fucking nowhere. Yeah, yeah. That well, is well, impressive. I've read his book. He's got a book called Star. He's actually being done now. Not surprised. You read the book and it's literally eight pa- pages on how he'd like sh- shag anything and anyone. And turns out sometimes that includes 14 years old. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> but I think that's coming out. Careless whisper. <laughs> Um, wake me up before you go go. Wham, oh, number three. What this, a this, tune. This is Billboard Top 100. This, this is in America. This is this. Is, that was George Michael's. Andrew yeah. Ridgely's just sat there going because I once had a job where I had to. Um, this is obviously a lot lower scale, but I was hired to work with John Cleese and read. So he'd read. The, he'd do his lines, and I'd have to check he was getting the script right. Yeah, right. But he didn't give a fuck, and he'd just be like, "Fuck off! I don't care." I'll just do it however I want. Well, yeah. And I go, John, you got... And he goes, I don't give a shit. Yeah. So I, but I was getting paid like £220 a day just to be there with him. And I thought, you know, he's, he was so funny and stuff. It was like, this is a, an honour. I, I do this yeah. for free. Yeah. But I was terrified the whole time because this woman who was continuity, script continuity person, who actually worked on EastEnders loads, oh. she kept going, I've never heard of your job role before. What, what is it? What are you doing? And I was like, why don't you back the fuck <laughs> off <laughs> and, and focus on what you do? Because <laughs> yeah, I'm bitch. focusing on what I do. Yeah. I'll get paid two hundred twenty pounds a day for but this. But I think bitch. that's how Andrew Ridgely felt <laughs> in Wham. I'm just going to stand and just nod your head, yeah, smile yeah. like fuck, you know. We turn up to the after party, look at Andrew. Like, oh, so what do, what do you do then? Are you as manager? He's like, no, no, I'm in Wham. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm in Wham. wham. Yeah. I'm Wham. <laughs> half a Wham. I'm half of Wham. But yeah. he's got that on his Insta bio. Half off <laughs> at Wham. wham. <laughs> um, I'm the Wham. Uh, yeah, I want to know what love is. This is a great year for songs. A great year for songs. Or I feel for you by Shaka Khan. Oh, out of touch. Yeah, this is really a really very good, good year. An amazing year for Andrew Ridgely and George Michael. A brilliant year for them too. Mm-hmm. Making it in, absolutely killing. Because every, everyone, there's no streaming, so you probably made. They probably made you know forty million dollars each that year. I was talking to. So what a good guess. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> very good it, guess. It's it's fun when we venture into just <laughs> guessing about how much they may be made. Throw a number in the air. Probably made forty million that year. <laughs> Fuck, that's a lot of money. Oh, yeah, actually, that's not true. What have I based that on? Just yeah, yeah, I yeah. literally just pulled right. that out of my head. Well, what I did is I analysed the Asian market and how yeah. many tape recorders and uh, were being sold up there, and then I thought of uh, royalties from VHS, yes, okay. from live concerts. Well, yeah, it's yeah, real yeah. And then I added the Western market to that as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that got you to then I million. took away agency fees, fifteen percent uh, for them. And then yeah. uh, split it directly down the middle, George and Andrew. 40 mil. each. <laughs> 40 each. So they made 80 million. 80 mil, but 40 Which each. Which yeah. would be like making a billion now. Yeah, pretty the, much. Yeah. Because you can go. Although that's not true. I just said it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> None of this is true. None Who of this is real. Shit. Let's just say George Michael could buy a and lot of that, houses. This for has 40, happened 000. quite a bit on this episode of mm. the podcast. Which is none of us, whenever we do any kind of inflationary measures, we're mm. like, oh, 100 pounds back then is what? We I'm just like, make up a 160. number. One sixty. Yeah, we're just like it's about two hundred and fifty pounds. Just t- now. tell me in uh, yeah. tell me in there fucking is, Ben and Jerry's so yeah, I can understand is, this. How many? <laughs> how much ice cream is it worth? <laughs> yeah, there is zero actual analysis going on in our brains. No, not at all. This is one of the dumbest. The thing is, the problem with the, the, the format of the podcast, we have to talk about stuff that actually requires intelligence and knowledge. But you two are very intelligent. We are, but not with this, you know? Well, and um, that's why every three minutes ends up being about paedophiles. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for tuning in to the Year Is podcast. I feel like Bobby did not enjoy himself. He did, no. This is usually him, trust me. He's a very a brittle uh, co-host. Uh, he's a stinging nettle. <laughs> I had such a lovely time. I could talk to you Do you have anything to plug? Anything to plug? Uh, I, when does this go out? Um, next week. Uh, the, I've got three more tour shows. Go I thought you were going to say Mickey Flanagan at the O2. I'm like, yeah. I think he's all right, mate. Yeah. Uh, ishanakbar.com forward slash tour. I've got three more tour dates left. Where are they? Uh, London, Salford, and Leeds. Those brilliant. are good. Those are good big cities. Yes, thank you. We've got listeners in all of them. Yeah, brilliant. So London, Salford, and Leeds, I'm coming to you. And viewers. And then um, in the autumn, I'm going on tour with K Curd all over the country. So cut that out, Jody. <laughs> uh, and uh, see me, see me on the next season of Sex Education on Netflix, yep. in which I'm starring, starring in, starring in. Thank you so much, Ishan. This Thanks has been one of my favourite episodes. Thank, Thank you. you. We had a great time. We love you. I love you. I, I did enjoy myself. I, please, Bobby. Next time, just look like you're enjoying yourself more. Don't yawn. <laughs> I I yawn. <laughs> oh! I, yawn. I yawned once. You were an hour and a half late. <laughs> We have things to do. No, I'm Thank sorry. you. Bye. Goodbye. Bye-bye. Goodbye. That was another episode of the year is. Thank you very much for listening. Please like and subscribe. Leave us a review or helps. I'd like to thank our producer Jody. And also I'd like to thank uh, Josh Weller 
for our intro music and song. It's uh, it's very catchy. It's very nice. I'm sure you all enjoy it at the beginning. So big thanks to Josh Weller. He's on Instagram at Josh Weller. Josh Weller. Follow him and uh, keep spreading the word of the year is. Thank you so much. Bye bye. <laughs>